New York Giants week number 13 game preview. So I'm in a different location today. This is where I work, but if I waited till I got home, uh, the video would not be out till tomorrow afternoon. So I wanted to give you guys more time to watch this game preview because it wouldn't make sense with you know less than 24 hours left to post that video. So we got to make with what we have, and this is where the video is going to be. So it is what it is. But anyway, uh, the Giants are at Seattle this week. It is a 4:05 game. And uh, the Giants are right now a plus 11, I think, currently, I just saw, because Daniel Jones was listed as doubtful. So um, that's not good. So the Giants are expected to lose this game by more than a touchdown, which I guess is fair based on, you know, our quarterback situation right now. But we'll dive into the game. Um, I'm just saying if I was betting this game, which I might, I would take the Giants at plus 11. I think the Giants would keep this game uh, a lot closer than that. So if I was a betting man, which I might be on Sunday, <laughs> then uh, maybe I will bet the Giants. So... With that being said, let's get into the offense. So, Daniel Jones is listed as doubtful, which is definitely not good news. There was some optimism like earlier today that he might be able to push through and play, but we found out a few hours later he was listed as doubtful. So, what do the Giants need from Colt McCoy? So, Colt McCoy, as we know, is not really a guy that we can rely on to throw for 300-something yards and three touchdowns and no turnovers. But what I would like against the league's worst passing defense, by the way, so a cake matchup for Mr. Uh, Colt McCoy here. But what I want from him is a simple game of over 200 passing yards. Give me a couple touchdowns, rushing or throwing, I don't really care. And give me, like, no more than one turnover. He can have, like, one turnover where it's not in a bad situation. Like, I don't want, like, a red zone turnover. I don't want, like, a turnover inside our own 20. Not a turnover that's going to kill us, but you're allowed one turnover. So I'll give him that. Even then, it'd be a lot harder to win the game turning the ball over. But Colt McCoy, hopefully they have a game plan around him that, you know, just makes this thing work somehow. It's going to be tough. Colt McCoy is not consistent. There's a reason he has not started many games since he's been in Cleveland basically 10 years ago, whenever it was. So, um, yeah, we're going to be a bit limited limited on offense. And, you know, I have Wayne Gallman listed next because my theory is this. The Seahawks are a smart team. Like, NFL teams should be smart, and they probably see that, oh, Daniel Jones is probably not going to play this game. Let's have this Colt McCoy guy try and beat us because I really feel like they're going to stack the box. They're going to stop Wayne Gallman. And it's going to be tough for Wayne Gallman to get going or any running back for that instance, whether it's, you know, if Devontae Freeman comes back, Alfred Morris, Deion Lewis, any Giants running back I feel like might have trouble here because, by the way, the Seahawks surprisingly are third best against the run in football. Now, maybe that's because they're the worst team against the pass and teams don't even bother running against them. That can definitely influence the numbers. But at the same time, they are right now ranked as the third best run defense yards per game-wise in football. So maybe Wayne Gallman will have a tough day. I think he will personally. As a person that owns Wayne Gallman and some fantasy football teams, I'm a little concerned. Hopefully he finds the end zone. But um, I just think consistency-wise and yards per carry-wise, it might be a bit of a tough game for him because they're going to all they're going to sell out to try and stop him have Colt McCoy try and beat them so really I don't want to say it but this game kind of falls on Colt McCoy's shoulders let's be honest so the Seahawks do allow the most yards per game in the NFL on defense at 418.1 that is a lot so they also allow the most passing yards per game I talked about their run defense being good but their pass defense is horrible 328.8 passing yards allowed per game which, by the way, is 37.3 more yards than any other team. I think second place is the Falcons at, like, 291 or something. The Seattle secondary, I mean, their secondary talent-wise, like, name-wise, isn't that bad. Like, you look at names like Trey Flowers, and they look at Jamal Adams, and they have Diggs at, uh, at the other safety spot. And who's their other corner? Shaquille Griffin? Like, they're not that bad. But for some reason, the secondary has struggled mightily this year. So I'm interested to see why it's so bad, and hopefully the Giants exploit that somehow. But, um, yeah, their uh, defensive end, Carlos Dunlap, who they got from the Bengals, has made a good impact for them so far, by the way. He uh, might not play. He has a foot injury, I believe, and their cornerback, Trey Flowers, who I just mentioned, who's not that great, but their cornerback, too, uh, is also questionable. So we'll see if he plays. But if they are missing in the game, it'll definitely help the Giants' offense even more. So on to the Giants' defense, and I didn't have it listed as offense before, if you noticed that, so I'm sorry I went back and fixed it for you guys, don't worry. So Seattle has slowed down on offense, re or, yeah, on offense recently. They were putting up some scores in the 40s at some points. They've been kind of like limited recently on offense. I don't want to say that they're just a bad offensive team all of a sudden, but let me look at their schedule real quick because they have definitely not put up as many points as they have in the past. Uh, I think the last couple weeks it's been somewhere. like They've had two games under like 20 points or something, so it hasn't been like as dominant as it once was. So against the, um, the Bills, they scored 34. Okay, a lot of that was garbage time. Um, 16 points against the Rams. 
28 points against the Cardinals, who have an iffy defense, not really that good, and then only 23 points against the Eagles this past week on Monday. By the way, short week for the uh, Seahawks, so once again, that favors the Giants right there. But uh, if you watch that Eagles-Seahawks game, there was a couple of instances on a fourth down. There was a fourth and goal they didn't get. There was a fourth down they also didn't get. So maybe that's why they didn't have as many points as they should have. But still, the um, offense for the uh, Seahawks is not putting up the crazy numbers they once were earlier in the season. So definitely, I guess, benefits the Giants in a way. So... Now we have, um, you know, shutting down all three receivers, definitely a tough ask. It's not even just DK Metcalf and Tyler Lockett on uh, their other receiver. I think his name is David Moore. I'm trying to think real quick. Yeah, it is David Moore, right? Uh, David Moore. Yes, correct. All right, so David Moore is our third guy. He's not bad. Like, he'll make a couple of big catches for you once in a while, and uh, the Giants might have a problem there. And I think Tyler Lockett's mostly their slot guy. Tyler Lockett's, like, the type of guy that'll have, like, 200 yards in the game or probably have 44. Like, it's weird. So don't let Tyler Lockett kill you. DK Metcalf should probably be on James Bradbury most of the time. And I think Bradbury can do a pretty good job on him. But it's also concerning because, like, this is a team that takes a lot of deep shots. And DK Metcalf needs to break one for 70 yards and, you know, just basically break open the game. So that's a concern as well. So the cornerbacks will have a tough job. They might go after uh, Isaac Yadam a lot. So we'll see what type of game plan the Seahawks offense has exactly. Um, what's next? So uh, the Giants, make sh- they have to make sure Seattle's run game is the thing that beats them. So I think Travis Homer, one of their running backs, Carlos Hyde, they're on the injury report. I don't know if they'll play, but they did get Chris Carson back, their main running back. Um, he's a really good player. A former seventh-round pick, but he's awesome. Uh, Chris Carson's a guy to watch out for, but the Giants should sell out to stop the pass and play a lot of deep zone. Just do a bend and don't break type of approach. I think Chris the Entertainer mentioned that as well. Just bend and don't break. They're not going to hold the Seahawks to 10 points, 13 points. We know they're going to score on us. Just don't let them get touchdowns. Force them into more field goals, as I have listed below. More field goals than touchdowns, and just stay competitive early. That's like the main thing, because if the Seahawks come out and jump up to a 13-0 lead, I don't know how the Giants, led by Colt McCoy, made that type of comeback. For the Giants to win this game and stay close, they need to be in it basically the whole time. Like, I don't see Seattle getting up by more than a touchdown and giving us this lead back. I think once Seattle goes up by a lot, they're probably going to take off and win the game by a decent amount. So the Giants have to make sure they keep it close. The defense has to play very well. We know that. So it's going to be a tough matchup for the secondary. Uh, maybe we see more Xavier McKinney. We'll find out. But still, Logan Ryan and Jabril Peppers are playing so well, you really can't take them off the field. Uh, generating a pass rush is definitely big in this game. You know, no O'Shane Zimenez the rest of the year. Kyler Fackrell is on IR for the next three games at least. So generating a pass rush with Cam Brown and, and uh, I was going to say Kyler Fackrell. That's not it. Carter Coughlin. Um, it's going to be a little tougher. But still, I'm excited to see the young guys get some more reps. And, of course, you know, they have Leonard Williams, who's been great on the pass rush. Even B.J. Hill's a guy not many people mentioned. But he's been great this year so the Giants have some names and they have to make it work somehow but Blake Martinez Tay Crowder have to step up as well in in stopping the run covering some of the tight ends like Will Disley uh, Jacob Hollister I believe is the other one so yeah they have to do a good job on defense the defense has to hold them to I feel like the number should be I had the Giants scoring 17 in this game for my score prediction but I think the Giants holding the Seahawks to like 20 or under kind of has to be a must because I don't expect their offense to put up many points. I'm going to be honest. I know the Seahawks defense sucks, but our offense led by Colt McCoy is very limited, and we know that. So I I think the Giants offense would probably be lucky to score 21 or more in this game. So I have the Giants losing 24-17, which, hey, that covers the spread. That's great. And I just don't want to see them get blown out. Like, that would kind of leave me, like, pessimistic for the future. But in reality, this game, I don't want to say it doesn't matter, but the Giants without Daniel Jones, I mean, it's not the real Giants, let's be honest. So facing a back of quarterback, a lot easier. Your quarterback's the most important player, and it sucks because this is a moment. This was the time where Jones was really starting to play well. He, string, he uh, strung together three straight Good games. I think two of them were really good. The Washington game was whatever. He did his job. But the last two games, he played really well. So it's a shame that this was the time he got injured in a game where he could have played the by far worst pass defense in football. So it is what it is. But if he finds a way to somehow remove that doubtful da- tag and play, that would be amazing. But at the same time, I did I do want him 100%. So that's, that's really the main thing. Um, I said in a previous video, get him back to fully healthy. Go on for that you know stretch run the final month where you play the Cardinals, the Browns. Uh, Cowboys and the Ravens and try to win at least two of those games and hopefully win this terrible division that's basically that should be the plan so don't rush him out there and hopefully Daniel Jones is able to heal up for next week I, I think he should be back next week I hope because you know the Giants seemed like 
there was a chance up until today that he could have played. And the fact that they, that they didn't rule him out on a Friday is probably a good thing because some teams do that. So, I mean, like, if he's not ruled out on a Friday, it's probably a good thing to at least have him doubtful, to at least have, like, that glimmer of hope. So, not saying he'll play, but I feel like for next week at least, he'll heal up enough to be able to play. So, that is good news going forward. But, yeah, I do have the Giants losing. Uh, it's not the worst thing in the world, though, because a lot of other teams in the NFC East have many other tough matchups. Like, I think the Eagles play the Packers. Uh, I forget who Washington plays. It's someone good. The Cowboys. Who do the Cowboys? The Cowboys might play Baltimore, so they'll probably lose that game as well. I just don't know who Washington plays off the top of my head. So, Oh, and Washington's at Pittsburgh, so that's probably going to be a loss. I mean, I could see them upsetting that game. Like, I'm not going to lie, but it's probably not going to happen. So, um, yeah, I think all the other three NFC East teams should probably lose this week, assuming everything goes as planned. So if the Giants lose this game, it's not the worst thing in the world. You're still in first place, and then going forward, you'll have a healthy Daniel Jones. So it's all good. It's all good. Hopefully everything works out. But uh, thanks for watching, guys. I'm sure this video was somewhat of a, you know, it wasn't normal because I'm not in an usual spot, but hopefully you guys enjoyed this video and I will talk to you guys next time.